We're leaving our Interlaken Hotel right after breakfast to begin one of the most scenic journeys of our entire Swiss visit. We're going to the top of the Jungfrau. There is one starting point if you're leaving from Interlaken, that's the Interlaken East Rail Station. And fortunately, you can go up one way and down a different way so that it becomes a great circle route during the day and you're never repeating yourself. And you can either ride the train up into the valley and then up to your left over towards the village of Grindelwald. Or you can, instead of going left to up to Grindelwald, you can go straight into Lauterbrunnen Valley to the town of Lauterbrunnen. And then you change trains and take another rail line up to the village of Wengen and continue from there to Kleinescheidig. That'll be your junction to get up to the Jungfrau. So either way, and you can come back the opposite route, so it's a big circle. In our case today, for various reasons, we decided to take the routing that will go up via Grindelwald, where we're going to be changing trains, and then continuing on up from there. The train journey up to the top of the Jungfrau is one of the most scenic rail lines in the world. The journey from Interlaken to Grindelwald can be easily made on the Bernese Overland Railway, and it travels on a scenic route through the valley and along the banks of the Lutschin River, and then it curves around and passes several villages, passes by Gunlichwan. This part of the journey is quite rural. It's a pastoral scene out there with the green fields and the mountains off in the distance. The Cogwheel Railway is ascending gradually to the small village of Grindelwald. And then we arrive towards the suburbs, you might say, of Grindelwald. These are the beautiful chalet homes of the people of Grindelwald, which is an excellent starting point for mountain excursions. Good chance to share a few stories along the way. Grindelwald is just a village. Today we're not spending time at Grindelwald, we're just changing trains. We have about a 10 minute break between trains to have a peek at the village. This can be a busy little village with tour buses running up and down the main street and small crowds of people here and there. So the center of town might not be all that peaceful, but it's easy to find a charming outdoor restaurant a few blocks away with stunning views of the mountains. It's, they're so close it seems you could reach out and grab them. While the village center itself may be ordinary, the stunning landscapes all around Grindelwald are so spectacular, they just might entice you to come back for a few days after you've completed exploring the other great attractions around Interlaken. Come on back up and do some hiking. Leaving the village of Grindelwald by the Alp train line on the rack and pinion system to Grund, the train ascends amidst charming views of the valley and mountains to Alpiglen, thence through the slopes of the Vergesal Alp and over a ridge affording still grander views back to Grindelwald and the giants of the Alps, eventually reaching the rail station of Kleine Scheidig. Passing by these goats browsing in the backyard of their chalet and passing the cows munching grass out in this beautiful pasture reminds us of the importance that agriculture historically has played in this area. Time was 100 years ago, that was the main occupation. Of course, tourism has become the number one occupation of the people of Grindelwald now, but nice they still maintain their flocks of animals. It's good for them and it provides another element of this beautiful scenery. You might think it would be a challenge to walk up this hill rather than ride in this comfortable train. And that's true. It's a high elevation and a steep hill. And yet looking out the window, there are people running. Amazingly, there's some kind of a foot race going on. And they are making some pretty good time going up, up, up. Now there is a famous marathon annual event in the Jungfrau area here on the same trail. And that happens in September. We're here in the month of May, so this is just another one of the regular, frequent foot races. The village of Grindelwald is about 4,000 feet in elevation, cradled in that lovely valley. And we're heading up higher and higher, going along the foot of the giant Eiger Mountain. And there's nice views looking back to Grindelwald Valley. 
and awesome views looking up the face of this wall of mountains that we're riding along. It's a series of interconnected mountains with their separate peaks. As we're approaching the Kleine Scheide, your rail junction that's at nearly 7,000 feet elevation. It's great these train windows slide down and open for you to let in that fresh mountain air and give you an unobstructed view. Arriving at the small Kleine Scheide train station, we're just going to hang around for a little while and change trains for the final leg up. And there's your classic alpine dog, the St. Bernard. He's even got his little cask of brandy posing with this Japanese tour group. It's free to take his picture, but if you want to get in the picture with the dog, then it's advisable to tip his friendly handler. Although Kleine Scheidegg is primarily a rail junction, it's actually a small hamlet with a couple of little hotels, and restaurants, and shops, and hiking opportunities. People desiring the purest bracing tonic airs combined with magnificent alpine scenery, quiet evenings, and freedom from formality or fashion would do well to spend a night at Kleine Scheidegg. This rail line from Kleine Scheidegg to the Jungfraujoch is 100 years old, and it's one of Europe's great engineering wonders. It's the world's highest subway because it goes into the mountain and climbs through four miles of tunnels inside the rock. The beginning of this rail journey is not underground. It's above ground and you get some great views for a few moments, so sit on the right side of the train if you can. The train trip from Kleine Scheidegg to the Jungfrau Jock station takes about 50 minutes and it brings you to the highest train station in Europe. And along the way, the train enters a few tunnels. About half the journey is inside the mountain in tunnels and it goes under some train sheds open on one side. And it does make two stops along the way. This allows passengers to get off the train and walk over to some picture windows for magnificent vistas. It stops at Eigervand, which is on the north face of the Eiger, and it stops at Eismir, which is on the south face of the Eiger. And you can see through holes that have been excavated through the mountain. The rail company has timed the stops at these two photo opportunities just perfectly you have enough time to get off the train and walk through the tunnel over to the picture window and take photographs, admire the view, catch your breath, and then walk back to the train and get your seat again to resume the journey. And they blow the whistle to let you know it's time to go. When you have a spectacular clear view like this with sunshine lighting up the glacier, be sure to take your pictures because when you get to the top, it might be a little bit more cloudy, as we found out, so shoot while you can. Construction of the Jungfrau Railway happened at the beginning of the 20th century, and this railroad has made the area one of the most visited places in the Alps. At the top, when you get off the train, you'll find everything is very nicely organized. You just follow the crowd, get on the elevator, you ride up a little bit more, and then one of the first things you want to do, of course, is get out into the snow. Unfortunately, when we first got out there, it was quite cloudy and we really couldn't see much. But it's nice just being up on the mountaintop anyway and on the glacier, toss around a little bit of snow, watch the other people, take some pictures and hope the conditions will clear. Of course, up on a mountaintop where there's a breeze, it could clear up within two minutes. So we've got our fingers crossed. Meanwhile, watching the people carry on. It looked like this guy is in his underwear or involved in some kind of a fashion shoot. There are many different areas to explore up here on the mountaintop, connected by tunnels and rotating doors and elevators. So we're gonna go show you around. But you haven't even reached the top yet. You ride the elevator another 356 feet up to the Sphinx the Jungfrau's highest platform at 11,700 feet, offering an unobstructed view in all directions. Temperatures are generally below freezing, but on a mild, sunny summer day, it's quite comfortable, and there's always hot chocolate waiting for you in the cafe. 
When you're back in this gift shop and lounge area, keep your eyes on those picture windows because sometimes the view will get even better. Now, perhaps when you were outdoors, it was pretty cloudy and you couldn't see so much, but within a few minutes, this view can change, the clouds blow away. Well, let me show you uh, an old photograph of a different visit to the top when the view was better. That's how it's supposed to look on a good day. The way they've developed the mountaintop, there's actually many more things to see and do up here besides looking at the actual view. They've created some entertaining spaces with movies, slideshows, little rooms with lights and light shows and exhibits. And there's a variety of different things to see while you're up here. So be sure to take advantage. Don't just come up to the top and take a picture and head on back down again. Do some exploring. You'll be amazed at how much there is to see. The most spectacular of all of these spaces and attractions is this huge multimedia movie room. It's just brilliant the way they've created these angular screens all around you, 360 degrees, and you're just flying and floating over the mountaintops. It's a wonderful panorama. And then the fun continues. You see, they've got all of these different tunnels to get you from one place to the next, so they decided to decorate them. They put in some light shows and different colors and different patterns, and it's really all done very nicely. It might seem a little tacky to you watching the video, but when you're there and you're immersed in it, this is really a fun way to walk through the tunnels. And you don't even have to walk. They put in moving sidewalks. These Swiss engineers have been working two miles above sea level. We're at about 11,000 feet here and they put in the convenience of moving sidewalks, bringing you past these historical photos and beautiful panorama paintings. Tell some of the history of the Jungfrau. There had been plans to build this railway a long time ago, starting from as early as 1860, and construction finally began in 1896, and it took quite a while there were some explosions, there was a few deaths, there was a lot of hard work involved. And finally, in 1912, they opened up the Jungfrau Jok station and began the train service. A large complex of tunnels and buildings has been constructed at the Jungfrau Jok up towards the peak. There's a hotel, two restaurants, an observatory, and the Ice Palace with its collection of elaborate ice sculptures a research station, there's a small cinema, there's a ski school. You can rent skis up here. In 1937, the Sphinx platform was opened up and more scientific instruments and laboratories were added with a weather station, astronomical telescope, cosmic radiation detector, solar observatory, and environmental monitoring station. The center's studies have documented an alarming trend in recent decades of a gradual reduction in the size and extent of the alpine glaciers, undoubtedly due to global warming. Plan on spending at least one hour, preferably two at the top, playing in the snow and exploring these various levels and exhibits at the visitor center. And then when you're ready, catch any convenient train back down the route you came up. You don't have to worry so much about the train schedules. You just head on down and get to the right track. Then there'll be people there to guide you and board the train and just wait for it to go. You return to Kleine Scheidig, where you can change trains for a different return route that will take you down through Wengen. Or if you're hungry and you're waiting for the next train, there's a nice restaurant there at Kleine Scheidig train station where you can get a good typical Swiss meal and some beer. You might think that eating in a small train station at 7,000 foot elevation is the last place you want to eat, but turns out this was quite tasty. It's sausage and potato, pretty simple. Having a meal next to the train platform is convenient. You can time your departure exactly. The only problem was the weather. Windows fogged, rain outside passing briefly through the village of Wengen. 
the weather did clear up beautifully the next day, and we'll have some wonderful, bright, sunny images to show you of our subsequent expeditions. We'll be taking you up more mountains and along the trails. On a normal clear day, this is one of the best views in the world, so that was a little frustrating to see the clouds. But let me show you an older video. This is what it looks like on a nice day, the view into Lauterbrunnen Valley, one of the world's great sights. And of course, there are many more dramatic landscapes to admire along that routing. This has been a very ambitious day that should leave barely enough time and energy to find dinner back in Interlaken and then turn in to rest up for more adventures tomorrow. We have a large series of movies about Interlaken and other parts of Switzerland on our website and our YouTube channel. Have a look.